they ripped the first barricade down. You know, I, I wasn't under any pretense that I could hold it for very long. This is a Capitol Hill police officer describing the precise moment that members of the far right group, the Proud Boys, breached the fence on January the 6th, kicking off one of the most ugly and profound moments in US history. Peace circle, breach the line. We need backup. In harrowing new footage aired for the first time last night, we see the officer knocked to the ground unconscious. My foot caught the stair behind me. My chin hit the handrail. At that point, I had blacked out. Um, the back of my head clipped the concrete stairs behind me. Testifying before Congress, Officer Edwards told of the moment she eventually came round and the horror before her. I, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. There were officers on the ground. They were bleeding. They were throwing up. I saw friends with blood all over their faces. I was slipping in people's blood. It was carnage. It was chaos. No wonder they chose her as the star witness in the first primetime hearing of the January 6th committee, one that had a singular purpose, to convince America that what happened that day was down to one man, Donald Trump, and that he must never be allowed to hold office again. President Trump summoned the mob, assembled the mob, and lit the flame of this attack. As we watched on, the committee played a timeline of graphic new footage, forcing those in the room to relive the horror and hoping it would have maximum impact. We lost the line! We lost the line! All of the knees came back! All of the knees came back up to the upper deck! All of the knees came back up to the upper deck! Stop. We need an area for the house members. They're all walking over now through the tunnels. We need to hold the doors of the Capitol. I need court support. They were peaceful people. These were great people. The aim was to place Trump at the center of the turmoil. The love in the air, I've never seen anything like it. The president in denial he'd lost the election, while testimony was played from his own attorney general, revealing that he warned him he'd found no fraud. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bullshit. How did that affect your perspective about the election? And this revelation that Trump's daughter, Ivanka, agreed with his assessment. I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said, was saying. A note was shown urging Trump to tell his supporters to leave immediately. And when Trump was told that rioters were threatening to hang his vice president, Mike Pence, you could hear the gasps in the room as the anti-Trump Republican Liz Cheney revealed this. The president responded with this sentiment, quote, maybe our supporters have the right idea. Mike Pence, quote, deserves it. This is an ABC News special. The seat of democracy attacked. Was there a conspiracy to overthrow an election? The hearing was shown across the US networks, bar Fox News, meaning Trump's supporters weren't even watching, simply absorbing the spin. An outbreak of mob violence, a forgettably minor outbreak by recent standards that took place more than a year and a half ago, but they've never stopped talking about it. Congressman, the yeah. Republicans are dismissing this as a political stunt, as nothing more than a political advertising Well, they're certainly the experts campaign. on that. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. just what's your response to that? You know, who are you going to trust? The bipartisan committee that is interested in going out and getting the facts and that is opening everything up to the American people, or those who want to sweep everything under the rug? Michael Fanone says the Trump deniers have swept his experience under the rug. He's the police officer who was dragged into the crowd that day and viciously attacked. I was beaten um, with uh, weapons, with fists. Uh, I was uh, trampled. I was struck with a uh, taser, electrocuted, um, you know, to the point of uh, falling unconscious, um, suffering a heart attack but he's in no doubt who's ultimately responsible for what happened to him. The head of that uh, criminal conspiracy is Donald J. Trump. 
uh, no doubt in my mind. The committee says it will aim to prove exactly that in hearings over the next several weeks. But the chances of charges ever being brought against the former president remain slim. And the reality is Donald Trump is as politically powerful now, if not more, than he was that fateful day in January last year. Well, there was certainly lots of theatre, but the big question is, was America watching and listening? Democrats don't need to be persuaded that Donald Trump is the villain here, and the Republican MAGA brigade will never be persuaded to turn against him. So the key are those in the middle, the independents who swing either way during American elections. Can they be persuaded as the evidence unfolds in the week to come to stick with the Democrats despite Joe Biden's waning popularity? The truth is uh, Donald Trump still reigns supreme in the Republican Party and would likely win the nomination if he chose to stand again in 2024. And the worrying thing about that is this, that since the last election, hundreds of pro-Trump big lie supporters have been installed in state legislators across this country. And they would likely be much more sympathetic to his cries of fraud next time around. And if that happens, what happens in that building there behind me? Good question. Siobhan Kennedy, thanks very much indeed. Well, earlier I spoke to the columnist and broadcaster Jonathan Capehart. I began by asking him why some cable channels, notably Fox News, are neglecting to show the proceedings of the inquiry, when, by contrast, the entire nation was gripped by the televised Watergate hearings 50 years ago. Oh, it's, it's emblematic of that. Fox News is the number one cable channel by multiples here in the United States. And so the fact that they didn't show the hearings means that about a half the country uh, didn't see or hear what the January 6th Select Committee presented to the American people. But that doesn't mean, Matt, that uh, that half the country isn't paying attention. Donald Trump on his own social media platform has already issued his own responses. You know, Fox News, Tucker Carlson on air last night and many other Republicans are saying this is a distraction. This is theater to distract the American public from the issues they really care about, which is gas prices, inflation, the kitchen table issues. They're very good at projection. What they are trying to do by trying to shift the conversation to inflation um, and high gas prices is to take America's attention away from the gravity of what is, was being presented in, in that hearing room. But we also have midterm elections coming up in November. The Democrats you know, are on the back foot on this one. They, they are set not to do very well. Is this an attempt to, to win over people, you know, shore up the Democratic base, and could it backfire? I don't think that um, that kind of partisan politics is at play here. If anything, the midterm elections um, is providing pressure on the committee because they know if Republicans retake the House that the January 6th Select Committee will disappear and that all of their work and everything that they've done will disappear because the Republicans will just, will just disband it. Every single American presidential election I've covered, apart from the last one, the question was always, who's going to win? After the last one and for the next one, I'm afraid that the question will have to be, will the loser accept the result? And that is the sad question that faces the American people. Uh, in the midterm elections, uh, it's going to be, it, it's going to be something to see, to see whether Republicans who lose elections actually accept the election results or do they follow the path that Donald Trump followed. But if the American people can no longer agree on who's actually won an election, if they can no longer agree on the rules of democracy, then your democracy is finished, isn't it? That, in a word, yes. How worried are you about the prospect of civil war in your country? Um, look, Matt, I am probably more concerned about civil war in the United States today, right now, than probably I have ever been, simply because American democracy is on the brink. And as the select committee hearing showed last night, we got a taste for just how close the United States came to losing its democracy. And as these hearings go on, we're going to see more and more evidence that the attempted coup against the United States government 
probably came within one or two steps of being successful. And the fact that we could be looking at a situation where January 6, 2021 was a dry run for 2024 or a future election. We are at a very tender moment here in the United States on a whole host of issues where you have um, elected leaders, elected Republican leaders who are not acknowledging the truth mm -hmm. in public, which we have heard through leaked recordings in private and which we are going to hear again through these hearings. People who know better, people who know that what they're saying and what they're doing uh, are not true and are not the right thing to do. And yet they are willing to say and do these things for the sole purpose of power. It is something that will be probably benefit them in the long, in the short term, but in the long run for the United States, for American democracy and the idea of democracy around the world, it is, it is damaging. I hope it doesn't come to, to civil war. I pray that it doesn't. Uh, but the fact that I can't guarantee you that it won't happen is something that concerns me and should concern the rest of the world. Jonathan Capehart, thank you very much. Matt, thank you. Well, earlier, I also spoke to Congressman Byron Donalds, who is a Republican representative from Florida. I asked him if Liz Cheney was right when she said that Republicans supporting Trump and his big lie would be remembered for their dishonor. I don't even know what Liz is talking about. Look, first and foremost, um, I was there in the, on the House floor on January 6th. I've always condemned the violence of January 6th. If you breached our nation's capital, you should be prosecuted to the extent of the law. That's always been my position. I don't shade it and I don't hide it. But what I'm also not going to do is go on a political witch hunt with Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats. But I want to know from you as a Republican congressman, do you yes. believe what Donald Trump believes still, that this election was stolen? What I, what I will tell you is what I, my position has been consistently, is that during the 2020 elections, in key counties and key states, election laws were violated. Those are the facts. You had situations in, in, in Milwaukee. Hold on. You had situations in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, and in Georgia, but where the election laws that are passed by state legislatures under our Constitution were violated, and COVID-19 was used as an excuse. Right. Those but are the facts. That's actually, what's the, happened. Well, the, if you're going to get into voting machines, I've never gotten right. into voting machines. But the, the That's fact, not where the I stand, fact, but I do know the election laws were violated. The facts are that there is not a single shred of evidence to suggest that this election was stolen. The fact is that the Attorney General, Bill Barr, told his boss, the President, Donald Trump at the time, that this was so. Ivanka Trump, his daughter, didn't believe it was stolen, nor did Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, nor does the evidence suggest that. So what I'm really curious about is that why so many Republicans to this day indulge Donald Trump in his fantasy, which is ultimately really damaging for American democracy. Uh, first of all, this is not an indulgence. American democracy is fine, no matter what the Democrats like to say. If half We're the be country just fine doesn't in the accept States. the result, Hold on, it's I'll not tell you fine. right now, people are casting ballots right now in the United States, and everything is just fine. Things are okay. Matter of fact, we had Joe Biden try to say that the state of Georgia's new election law was Jim Crow 2.0, but we've had record turnout of minority voters in the state of Georgia under current Georgia law. So who's lying now? Let's get back to the facts. The reality is this, is that when you change election laws in, in, in the middle of an election season, there are opportunities for the vote to be juiced, expanded, whatever the case might be. There you have Democrat operate, operatives who did operate on the ground in key counties and key states. That is what has happened. All the evidence was considered in the months between the election day and January the 6th. Again, I repeat, there was not a single shred of evidence to suggest that this election had been stolen. And therefore, when you have a, a loser, Donald Trump, indulging this fantasy and still claiming that it was a lost election, and also, as some would argue, inciting the mob to storm Capitol Hill, far from embracing the man, surely you should banish him from your party. Uh, actually, let's also get the record straight. Uh, the president never once, in any speech, fomented a crowd to storm the Capitol. We're going to fight the like hell. Right. We're going to march on unlike, Capitol unlike Hill. Unlike what the January 6th... Unlike what the January 6th committee did last night, I actually listened to the entire speech. I've read the whole speech. The president speech. did say 
we're going to march to the Capitol. Mm. But he also said, we're going to we're going to we're going to protest peacefully. Yeah. So are you going to say we're going to fight other, like hell? Yeah. But you, that's what he said. Don't take the man's words out of context. Be honest with everybody. If you have an American election, whether it's the midterm election or presidential election, in which the losing side cannot accept its loss, even mm. though the results are legitimate, what hope is there for American democracy? Well, first of all, a couple things. Um, Hillary Clinton still thinks that the election was stolen from her by Russian operatives, but then the data finally came out that the only Russian operative was her campaign. Storm Capitol Hill. She still made that contention. She didn't um, incite you have, to you have, you have Democrats Hill. who objected she when John the Kerry lost in 2004. But she accepted you have Democrats the result. who still object when, when Al Gore lost in 2000. So there's always discrepancies in people who dispute the outcomes yeah, of not, presidential elections. Excuse me, there's but a difference. American democracy, there is a difference between the way they behave and the way Donald fine. Trump behaved. We are good to go here in the United States because we have passionate people who love their country. And our electoral systems are great. Our country is great. We're still the envy of the world. I'm not sure if you are, actually. I really am not sure. Oh, no, sure. we are. Trust me. Because everybody's trying to get here. Go look at our southern think... border. Everybody's trying to come to the United not, States. Not, not everybody. I can assure you that. And I'm not sure whether after January the 6th, your democracy is either, you know, fit for purpose or still the envy of the world. I'm sorry to break it to you. Well, you know, that's why we're actually a constitutional republic, not a pure democracy. Because what we don't want is mob rule or majoritarian rule. That's mm -hmm. what our framers uh, actually created here. Byron Donalds, thank you very much. Anytime.